Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the 69th episode of Lowry at Home. I'm your host, Naturalist Kirk. And on today's show, we have a naturalist, Laurel, who's going to be telling us about the black-capped chickadee. Do stay tuned to the end of the show. I'm going to be telling you a bit about a fun activity you can do at the Nature Center this weekend. But uh, for now, we're going to shoot things over to Laurel. Go ahead. Hello, this is Laurel from Lowry Nature Center. I thought today we could meet up close a very cool, very common, but very interesting little bird called the black cap chickadee. The chickadees are easy to identify with their black cap on their head, just like their name, and the black patch on their chin, just under their beak. Going into the winter months, chickadees start forming groups with other birds, but they're often the first birds to come up to your feeders. They will send a scout out to inspect and figure out if it's safe, and if it is, you'll see an entire flock of these little birds visiting and gathering seeds. Chickadees are also fun to listen for. We'll hear both the chickadee dee dee call that they use as the days are getting shorter, and we'll listen for the phoebe spring or mating call. This we're starting to hear already, even though it's only in the middle of winter. Chickadees can use this call as an alarm. The more number of Ds called at the end, the more alarming something is nearby. Chickadees are really amazing survivors in winter. They will fluff out their feathers in order to keep their bodies warm, and they're able to go into torpor overnight, and basically slowing their metabolism down so that they can survive on super cold nights. Chickadees will also look for little microclimates that will help them conserve energy overnight. They'll often use cedars or other evergreens as a great hiding spot in order to have some protection from wind or snow during the cold nights of winter. Here is a look-alike to the black-capped chickadee. This bird is called a white-breasted nuthatch. It's very similarly sized, but if you look at the beak, the beak curves up slightly and it's got a bluish gray on its back. It also likes to hop down tree trunks. So those are a couple of the ways you can tell this bird from the black-capped chickadee. The other thing you'll see going into winter is often chickadees will come up to your feeders with lots of friends. Um, in winter, small birds will form flocks together called a feeding guild, and they basically just travel around in a group in order to have somebody always on the lookout for a predator. There's not as much cover in winter, so this is a way to protect the entire group that's looking for food. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about this common but very capable little bird, the black capped chickadee. And I hope you enjoy looking for them throughout the rest of the year. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye. Excellent. Thank you, Laurel. You know, I can hear some of those chickadees around me right now outside here in my backyard as they are calling and getting all excited about this sunshiny day we have. Now I want to tell you about a cool program you can do this weekend out at the Nature Center. I already have 23 families signed up and I'm looking for seven more families who want to go on a little uh, adventure learning about animal tracks. It's a totally self-guided adventure so you're not going to be with any other families. Uh, what you do is you are going to get some QR codes you get to click on that bring up videos on your phone like this of me 
explaining about animal tracks. And I'll send you off on a mission out in the forest to find a certain kind of animal track or animal sign. And once you find it, you can scan the next code on the piece of paper I'm going to give you. And then it will bring up another video where I'll tell you about that the next track you're going to look for. And it'll take you on through the forest looking for these different things. So it'll be like having a little naturalist here in your pocket. And I'll be going on the hike with you, at least virtually. So it should be kind of fun. You get to make the tra tra the hike as long or as short of a trail you want and look for some fun things outside with your family. So if you're interested in that, I'll put a link down in the comments of today's show so you can find out. Be sure to check our end notes of the show here on the screen in a moment with some other fun things going on at the Nature Center. We hope to see you soon. Thanks for tuning in to Lowry at Home. Bye-bye, everybody.